Welcome to my channel. Today we're going back to the basics. We are going to create an art journal page starting with a napkin. This napkin is called Robin's Melody and it comes from nittiesnapkins.com. So the first step is I'm going to isolate the main focal image. I'm just going to rough cut it out, leaving all the plies on. It just makes it a little sturdier to cut out. And I'm going to cut two images. This napkin has some images that it, where the bird is looking to the left and then it has another image where the bird is looking to the right. It also has this evergreen bow. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it, but I'll cut it out. If not, it'll go back into my stash. Cutting out the napkin like this allows me to play with it. It allows me to try it out on different sizes of art journal page. Here's the seven by 10. Then I'm thinking, oh, maybe I want the nine by 12. How does this look? I can move it around and audition them. So I have a basic idea about what I want to do, but first I want to create my background. So a good way to start off a page is to get some book paper. I've got some music paper. It's completely vintage that I got at a thrift store. And then I've got some type that I just typed out on my, with my Word program. And I printed it off and I adjust the sizes of it. So I've ripped those off and I'm just going to glue those down to as the first layer of the background. I'm using my fluid matte medium and I'm overlapping some of the uh, book papers. Now, this book paper is going to do two things to the background. It is going to add some patterning, the text or the music, and it is also going to add texture, especially where I layer it up because, and that's going to add to the finished page. There is no rhyme or reason. I like to leave some of it not covered. Some people cover the whole page. Now I wanna add more patterning. So two ways to do that would be either stamping or stenciling. I grab this Fantango stencil and I am stenciling with black. Ooh, made a bit of a mess there. So I'm gonna grab a baby wipe and wipe some of that back and off. I'm not worried because this is simply the first layer. And I'm gonna put three places. It always seems to be a good plan to do work in odd numbers. It seems more pleasing to the eye and the composition. I'm going to make sure this dries completely before I move to the next stage. A lot of the drying time is off the off film. I don't record that. So here I'm still playing with the orientation. I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to use one bird or two. You've seen the picture, so you know I end up using two. Then I decide I want to add more texture to the background. But instead of grabbing another stencil, I'm going to use the same Fantangle stencil. And I'm going to apply the modeling paste from the Crafters Workshop through this stencil in three places. Using it as stenciling with the black and then the modeling paste adding texture makes for a very cohesive page. Now the reason I chose the Fantangle stencil, the birds, they have holly and you know the points of the holly seem to, and then that evergreen bough resembled it. So now I want to colorize. So I'm going to use my ink tense blocks. I grab the swatches and I'm looking at the napkin and I'm pulling some of the colors out. But before I apply that color, I want to neutralize my background somewhat. I want to push back some of the music paper and the book paper and the stenciling that I did. And I'm using unbleached titanium and a mixture uh, with white gesso. If you haven't tried un unbleached titanium, give it a try. I find that I have used it. Once I started using it, I really like it, especially for vintage pages or when you want to go more neutral. 
So I'm just adding a little more white here or there, a little more of the unbleached titanium, just till I'm happy with the background. So now I'm taking those focal images and I've taken off the excess two plies. And now I'm water cutting around the image and getting rid of any of the excess of that napkin. I'm getting very little water on my liner brush and I run it a little bit and then I pull up and it cuts it. This gives you a deckled edge and I find that it disappears a little bit better when you glue it down. You don't really see where the napkin ends and the page begins. And for the most part, when it's flowers or plants or even wildlife, there's a lot of forgiveness there because it's not exactly a straight line. I'm not sure I want that piece, so I'm taking it off. I might put it back on later. If not, it goes into my stash and it'll show up on another art journal page. So I just work my way around and cut out that. So I could put one bird here. I'm thinking about putting that branch there, maybe a bird in the corner. Hmm. So I decide to water cut the second bird and then I put them both together. I kind of overlap them a little bit and then I glue it down with my fluid matte medium. But before I do that, I am pushing back and some of that black and any of the darker uh, patterning that's there. I don't want that to show through the napkin. So I'm just adding white gesso to knock that back now that I know exactly where my focal image is going to go. And here's where I'm going to glue this down with my fluid matte medium. I use the Liquitex brand. Now I'm putting this on and putting a coat of it on top. And you're going to notice me making a mistake right away here. I go and I'm getting a little rough and I push that napkin and it rips. But don't worry, that is not the end of the world and there's an easy fix and you're gonna see that in a bit. So I am a little more careful with the second one here if I've overlapped the two and the birds are kind of looking at each other. So here's where you can take that napkin. So I could take images from the same napkin like I did on this one and combine them to make a bigger focal image or you can mix and match from a various napkins. Now I had a little, I got a little over zealous with the uh, white. So now I'm getting, taking the unbleached titanium and just adding that where I had too much white. This is the base cut coat of my background. I want to seal the modeling paste and I want you know, a solid color before I start colorizing it with my ink tense blocks. You remember that I looked at the napkin and I pulled some of the colors that go with the colors from the napkin. So using a napkin to lead the way is a great way of learning what color schemes really work. Now I love the colors that I use on this and I will use it on a non-Christmas page at another time. So the colors that I grabbed, I believe were mustard. It was a burnt sienna, the green, one of the greens that matched the holly leaves, as well as brown of the branches. And I'm just scribbling it on. Here's the mustard and then activating it with water. Now ink tense blocks are ink that activate with water but once they're activated, they are permanent, unlike watercolor. They give a very matte finish and they're great to work with to give you that watercolory look, but with permanence. So when I go to glue the sentiment down, it's not going to reactivate. So I'm just adding, that's the burnt sienna. I'm adding a little bit here and there. It's getting caught in the 
nooks and crannies of both the modeling paste and where I've overlapped the collage papers. And I do a little bit of a dance. You add some color, I'm blending the colors right on the page, and then I take off some, I add more, till I like the background. But you'll see that all the background colors that I'm adding now are the ones that came from the napkin. So it, like I said, I love the colors here, the burnt sienna, the mustard, that green. So what I would do is I'll swatch that out on a color scheme card, grab a tag and put those colors down and then keep that as a reference guide to come back to. So you can see how the stenciling with the black through that stencil and then the modeling paste. You see both of those, they show up very differently, but they work together. So I keep playing with that here. I'm adding the green. When you think you have it, stop, let it dry. If you get color where you don't want it, you can go over it with white gesso and then recolorize it. In the short term, you'll see, you've will see you seen me, I've just grabbed a baby wipe and I can wipe it off. So all I'm doing is wetting my finger and then activating the uh, ink tense block. Now here, I'm just, remember I ripped it? I just added a line with the ink tense block on a liner brush and it's all good. That's how easy it is to fix the mistake. So don't panic. Now I'm just going to colorize my focal image. I'm just at making it a little bit deeper. And by just getting some of the ink tense block color, rubbing it with a wet brush and then painting over top. Here I'm just adding a little bit of white gesso. For the lighter areas. And then I colorize the berries, I colorize the holly leaves, the birds, one by one. And all I'm doing is just wetting my brush and rubbing it on the block and then doing a wash of color where I want to add more color. I am loving how the Fantangle stencil really works well with those holly holly leaves. I grab my General's charcoal pencil. This was, I believe, the medium one. And I'm sketching around the focal image. This is giving kind of a sketchy look to it and it is outlining or shading the images. This helps the focal image stand out from the background. and defines the focal image as well. Every once in a while, you might see me, I'm gonna just rub this a little bit to smudge it. That gives it more of a vintage, rustic type look. And it also makes it look more like you hand painted this as opposed to just glued down a napkin. I 
I grab my woodless charcoal pencil and I'm shading around the edge of the page. Now this one I think was the medium and the, or it's the soft and I was looking for the extra soft one. I did find it and so I finished it with that. It smudges, the softer it is, the easier it is to smudge. There, that's the soft one. And you can see that it's much darker and it smudges a little easier. So then I go brown and I do that. I look through my sentiments and I end up in the sentiment pack, grateful and blessed. And I cut out the sentiment, or I cut out the, or choose the sentiment called enjoy the little things. I just thought it went well with the birds. So it's not a real Christmassy saying. And I decide instead of leaving it as a rectangle, I cut out each one and then I glue that down with the fluid matte medium. And you'll notice that even though I'm adding wet here, it is not reactivating the ink tense block that is, had colorized the background. If you use watercolor, you can get the same effect, but you wouldn't want to put wet on it because it would reactivate and smudge. Now I'm using my woodless charcoal pencil and outlining the sentiment and smudging it a little bit too. In total, this was about 45 minutes. I've sped it up about double time. So with drawing time, it's under an hour to create this page. So there's the napkin. And look at the texture and the patterning in the background. You can see the music paper. You can see this, the text. Oh, but you know, I can't not put some splatter of gold on there. That's just going to add a little bit of patterning as well as some bling. And this gold color is going to go really well with the colors that are on this page. I've got close-ups of the finished project. I hope you enjoyed this trip to Back to the Basics. Until next time, go get creative.